decade in, and times and people change. But Jesus always stays the same. No matter what the world tells us, the most important things will always be our faith and our family. Hunting is how we share the gospel and bring the lost toward Christ. And all of this starts right at home. So join us as we take the light into the darkness. You know, it doesn't matter if you have five acres or 5,000 acres, you can do things to manage that property to better your wildlife. And now that's something that Stafford Daniel Arms of Arms Family Homestead knows all too well. And every year he kicks off his management with a control burn. What's up guys, it's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. And as you can see, I'm out here doing a little little controlled burn prescribed fire not quite we don't have a full prescription and a crew and all that it's just me burning a few leaves i got a few areas around my my pastures and you know burn down along the creek and i'm fixing to move over to this two acre food plot field over here and burn between the fence line which is not actually a property boundary but from the fence line towards the creek And the removal of cedar trees who are not native to Oklahoma, not only does that help your wildlife, the water levels on your property, you're also doing the local ecosystem a huge favor. side of this field kind of around two sides of it and let that fire creep into the wind and it really just was not carrying through that grass very well really slow so I came in and I made a strip about 20 yards into the field to uh, let it have a small head fire and it just pushed across there really quickly and pretty much burned out in that area and you can see this is this is a backing fire that's just slowly creeping through here and uh, everything stayed contained nice and safe and sound so i think i'm gonna go ahead take off through here and take another strip just keep stripping my way back because that head fire burns so fast but i am alone so here's my backing fire I come over here 10 15 yards cut across i've got the creek for a boundary down there Nice big green field over here. We shouldn't have anything uh, to really have any major concern. Lots of improvement, but a lot more work to go. Mm -hmm. 
This segment is brought to you by Vortex Optics, backed by the unconditional, unlimited lifetime warranty. To learn more, visit vortexoptics.com. And by these fine sponsors. This segment's brought to you by Buck Blitz Deer Attractant. If you're not using it, you better hope your neighbor isn't. To order yours or to learn more, visit buckblitz.com. And by these fine sponsors. So Daniel and his son Houston have decided to implement trapping into their wildlife management program. From coyotes to nest predators, it's gonna help with turkey and quail. All of it is gonna make a difference in the end. So far, all we've been running is the dog-proof raccoon traps. Uh, but today, we're going to add some canine sets, some bobcat sets into the mix. We've got some different styles of traps we're going to put out. Well, looky there. Somebody got both hands down in the trap last night. Not a big coon, probably a little female if I had to guess. We'll get her put down and taken care of. That's coyote number two in the same spot. Being in Southern Oklahoma means you're probably gonna have a hog problem. And so trapping them, well that's definitely gonna help your local wildlife as well. What is that? Did you get poop on your chin? Poop on? I burnt myself with a curling. Slow down. In a pasture, there's nothing wrong with going 10 miles an hour in a pasture. Safety pins are out, trap set, baited, ready to go. Camera's running, and uh, I bet you we have some pigs in here in a day or two. Six, maybe seven in there. And I think this is my big pig. There's a bunch. Let's get them. Golly. Well, we got a bunch in there, but we didn't catch the big black one. I thought he was in there, but I guess not, unless he got out. You know, Daniel and Houston have made a huge impact through trapping on their property, and all that's going to do is make the hunting for them this next fall even better. What's your game plan tonight? I'm going on doe patrol. <laughs> Houston's going to shoot us another doe. We're going to put another doe in the freezer. I had a friend that texted me and said, hey, I'm looking for some, some deer meat for the freezer. Can you help us out? And Houston was like, yep, sure can. Mm -hmm. This field right here had, I think our trail camera had 11 does in it. Yesterday. At one time. Yeah. So we need to remove some does. deadly with that CVA. Meet in the freezer for a buddy tonight, huh? Yep. This segment's brought to you by Wise Eye Cellular Trail Cameras and their patented hunt control technology. See how Wise Eye's changing the game at wiseeyetech.com. And by these fine sponsors. This segment is brought to you by Habit Outdoors. Support the ministry by using promo code FDO15 at checkout. To learn more, visit habitoutdoors.com.
and by Fort Scott Munitions with Tumble on Impact technology. Support the ministry by using promo code FDO10 at checkout. Order yours at fortscottmunitions.com and by these fine sponsors. You know, Daniel tries to manage his property for big bucks. That's what they try to shoot. And so this fall, Daniel's going to be working really, really hard to try to get his son, Houston, and his daughter, Emily, on a big buck for themselves. Hey, guys, we're back in the deer woods. It's uh, October 20th, about 6.20 in the morning. First day, youth rifle season, 2023. log mission update we are extreme failures we've been struggling <sighs> it's hot we're back for the evening set though we set this morning didn't see a whole lot a couple small bucks and got out of here a little bit early went to church got some lunch went home did some chores and we're back for an evening set You know, sometimes the deer read the script and sometimes they don't but Daniel and his kids are gonna stay after it and hope that one of these big bucks is gonna slip up hey guys Houston and I are back in our little shed to blind huh our shed that we converted into a hunting blind at, at Mill Creek and uh, we got a really strong north wind cold fronts come through it's not just cold by any means but it's in the 50s like 15 mile an hour wind deer have already been on their feet. We just got settled in here, but according to the trail cameras on the property, there's uh, there's been deer moving around for the last hour or so. This segment's brought to you by Buckhide Hunting Blinds. These incredibly priced all metal hunting blinds are made for the working man. Learn more at BuckhideHuntingBlinds.com and by these fine sponsors. Now it's time for the Taylor Targets Tech Tip of the Week. We are so excited to be partnered with our friends from Power Belt Bullets. Now folks, the all new Power Belt Bullets have been completely re-engineered. These are not your grandpa's muzzleloader bullets. The all new design power belt bullets are fast, accurate, and to say the least, devastating. That speed, accuracy, and devastation is something that we have seen personally here on Final Descent Outdoors for big game all across North America. And power belt comes in a wide variety of sizes and calibers, making sure they've got a bullet for whatever your needs are. 
we here at Final Descent Outdoors proudly trust Powerbelt Bullets because we've seen the results. So to learn more or to order yours, check them out at powerbeltbullets.com. This segment's brought to you by Woodhaven Custom Calls. Support our ministry by using promo code Final Descent 10 at checkout. Place your order at woodhavencustomcalls.com and by these fine sponsors. Well, this buck is definitely on the hit list, and they're hoping that Houston will get his chance to fill his first Oklahoma buck tag of the year. fast and uh he came right where we, i wanted him to like right where <laughs> perfect 30 yard shot okay uh the thing is though that's a big buck but houston made a great shot we've we've reviewed the footage 20 times i don't know how many times and we've watched it in slow-mo but the, he shoots that buck and it just kind of ran about 75 yards and then stood there forever yeah. And you could kind of tell he was hurt, but he, he started to. He win. just barely walked, but he was. <laughs> I don't he know was if you like, know. I don't know if you like, noticed, but he was drooling out of his mouth. He was. Yeah, you could see it, but we he never watched him go down. down. But we watched that buck for what five to eight minutes, probably. Yeah. In the field, I was thinking he, he's going to fall down. He's going to fall down. He's going to fall down. Well, everything about the shot looks pretty good, but the fact that this buck stayed on his feet in front of him so long after the shot, Daniel feels it's best for them to back out and go back in the next day. Houston and I, I just picked Houston up from school. We looked for three hours the first night and what, three and a half hours the next day? Yeah. We ended up, the dog, we brought a dog out and tracked the deer across this field and he made a big circle out in this field, but look, see all the buzzards i don't know if you guys can see it on video there's something dead over there and we're gonna go find out what it is there, he's got to be over there huh oh my goodness coyotes got him guarantee you i can't show much of that but uh there's houston's buck well, that's not how they wanted to find this deer, but if you hunt long enough, especially with archery equipment, it's gonna happen. Well, we found Houston's buck, finally. Um, it is 4 p.m., so at 7.02 p.m., it would have been 48 hours that it took us to find this deer. Now, obviously, the coyotes and the buzzards got the best of him, and I hate that because we never wanna see an animal go to waste, but at least we know for sure. We know Houston made a shot. He made a good shot. We can see the exit wound, the entrance wound. And he's a 10 point. I, I have no idea how it took this deer so long to expire, but these things are the toughest animals on the planet. There is so much work that went into managing the Arms Family Homestead, prescribed burns, trapping, even doe management. And in the end, all that hard work, well, it paid off. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Hard work pays off, and spiritually, when we put in hard work for the Lord, we know that that work won't be in vain. You know, doing work for the Lord is loving your neighbor, helping the less fortunate, doing good deeds, doing the things that make Jesus look good. 
So today, if we can be praying for you, encouraging you in your walk with the Lord and making decisions that will help you make Jesus look good, we would love to do that. Matter of fact, you can go to our website, finaldescentoutdoors.com. You can actually find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Shoot us a message there. Let us know how we can be praying for you and encouraging you in your walk with the Lord. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Moran Taxidermy is the official taxidermist of Final Descent Outdoors. Closed captioning brought to you by Real Avid. <laughs> Strut your stuff!